before you know it, these few little lesions that don't look like a big deal turns into a, a canopy that's highly infected by this disease. Hi, my name is Jake Vossenkemper, Director of Agronomy and Research here at Liquor Grow. Hi, my name is Hope Soroka, Agronomy Field Advisor here at Liquor Grow. Jake, we're standing in a field, we're all doing scouting. What are some of the things that we're seeing? Yeah, Hope, so yesterday I was down near our Mount Pleasant, Iowa location looking at a bunch of fields and a little bit surprised to see quite a bit of gray leaf spot. Okay. And a decent amount of northern down there as well. Um, but we have been getting some pretty regular rains here of late, and we know that regular rains provide the leaf wetness required for the infection to take place. But rain also spreads those spores around the canopy and gets those spores spread out throughout the canopy and gets the infection really going. So we've been getting a lot of rain here, lots of small rains, lots of large rains, pretty continuous over the last few days here, and that's really gonna get the disease going. What else have we had? Heat. We've had heat, which would make gray, gray leaf spot. That's the perfect environment for gray leaf spot is warm, wet temperatures. Um, northern likes it a little bit cooler. I've been surprised to see as much Northern with the higher temperatures we've had. But we have to remember there's different races of Northern and different races of Northern prefer slightly different temperature regimes. So the point is it's been wet and gray would definitely be concerned, but I'm also seeing quite a bit of Northern, which isn't completely shocking given we know there's different races and, and some differences in the temperatures they like. So Jake, we mentioned these other ones, but specifically today we're looking at northern corn leaf blight in this field. This corn is just tasseling. It's July 11th. Are you concerned about seeing this big of lesions in the field today? And what should we do about it? Yeah, uh, I definitely would be concerned about having lesions of that size and of this number in this corn on July 11th. This corn is just tasseling. It's just, it's just starting in the critical period. It's got a lot of grain fill and a lot of yield to make yet. And it's gonna be, it, it's gonna have its knees cut off if it gets uh, northern as bad as it looks like it could. This, sure. you know, these lesions are gonna continue to grow in length. There's gonna be more of them, remember. This is a polycyclic disease. So what that means is this lesion is gonna produce a hundred more spores, which are gonna infect. And then those 100 spores are gonna produce another thousand spores and before you know it these few little lesions that don't look like a big deal turns into a, a canopy that's highly infected by this disease. Right. So very important that we're seeing it now and we're going to act upon it. Now one other thing I think it's good to highlight is I've seen another disease like this called Goss's wilt. How do we know that this isn't Goss's wilt? So Goss's wilt can look somewhat similar to northern but generally speaking the lesions tend to be wider and longer in general than northern. The other kind of key di diagnostic indicator is that typically in the morning you're going to see ooze leaking out of the bottom of these lesions. It's like a slimy, sticky ooze. The other thing you're going to notice is that there's going to be some freckling within the lesion itself. There are kind of some raised freckles within the lesion itself. Um, it's, it's not easy to diagnose the difference between gosses and northern, but those are the key di di diagnostic indicators. The ooze at the bottom of the lesion and then the freckles within the lesion. If you think you have gosses wilt, my advice would be get a hold of your local field advisor, such as Hope. Hope's seen gosses with me last year. She can come out and diagnose it. Any of our field advisors can diagnose it. If they're having trouble, they can contact me. But gosses is something that isn't common around here. But it's very concerning if it is, because it can really reduce yield. These hybrids that are bred for this part of the corn belt don't tend to have good resistance, so it can it can take some corn hybrids pretty quickly. Um, so you need to know if you have gosses. I like that you highlighted the hybrids. Maybe we can't do anything about it right now, but next year it is very good to know when we're selecting for hybrids. Absolutely. The other thing you need to know about gosses is that you need wounds and an entry point, right? We talked yep. about that earlier. Yep, so. Yep. Usually with gosses, there's a hail event associated with it. There's some sandblasting associated with something, something that tore up the canopy pretty good because that gives the entry point for gosses. Fungi don't need an entry point, okay? So hail doesn't necessarily make fungal diseases worse because they can get into the plant without the plant being injured at all. And gosses okay? well as a bacteria. And gosses well as bacteria, and it needs an entry point like a hail event, like sandblasting.
All right, so the one thing that I just want to say about the disease pressure, we're starting to see hope. It's pretty early. I saw a lot of disease in Mount Pleasant yesterday, like I said, but I'm also hearing, well, we're not going to spray this year because corn prices are down. I understand the economics. I do understand that. At the same time, you can't ignore the environment. You can't ignore the wet weather we've been having lately. You need to really be thinking hard. Maybe you don't spray every acre and that's fine and I get that. But think about the fields and the environments that are definitely gonna benefit this year with the disease pressure it looks like we're gonna have. So that's no-till environments, strip-till environments, continuous corn, and then finally you need to be looking at hybrid resistance. If you have a hybrid that has pretty weak resistance to northern or gray, I would be spraying it for sure. Right. Okay. And so it's not a yes no decision. It doesn't have to be a yes no decision. It can be a let's be smart about it and pick out some environments where we know problems are likely. You bet. And we're seeing these lesions, but there's tons of others that are coming along the way. So as soon as you see a spot on your leaf, then you should probably th start thinking about a fungicide application uh, to prevent those other ones from coming up in the next couple weeks. Well, thanks Jake for highlighting all these things, but I got to get going. I got some more fields to look at. You suspect you have any diseases or want to do a walk along or ride along? Talk to your agronomy field advisor. Stay in the know with LicoGrow.